Our next caller is Sean from California. What's up, Sean? How can we help you? Hey, guys. I uh, just wanted to first say I uh, really appreciate all the content you pull out, put out and uh, really enjoy a lot of the podcast episodes. So, um, cool. Thank just you. Just to Thanks. give you some background. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, just to give some background, um, I played a lot, a lot of water polo and uh, swimming when I was growing up, and uh, I do have a little bit of a background in strength training. But um, right now I'm coming off a um, training protocol for a half Ironman. So just wondering which of your programs would you recommend um, just wanted, wanting to, go, um, as I transition out of kind of endurance training, I know you guys have talked about the benefits of resistance training and strength training. So just um, which program do you guys, would you recommend that would be a good one to start with? I mean, I know you guys have math starter obviously, but um, I already do have a pretty strong background in strength training um, with, I mean, just the form technique of the bench squat deadlift. Um, so I wasn't sure if maybe I could go into mass performance or mass aesthetic or something, or, um, or if any of those programs would be good to, um, would be suitable to maybe combine with occasional, um, cardio or endurance training, whether that be uh, swimming or running. MAPS anabolic. Yeah. So actually quick question, Sean, you, you just finished uh, your half marathon. How long ago? On um, half Ironman training, so it was about three weeks ago. Was when I, I did the kind of a mock half Ironman, just because all the races have been canceled for the past year. So I decided just to do it, but um, just okay. on my own without the actual um, sanctioned event. Okay, and then for people who don't know, half Ironmans in are insane. Uh, there's, there's, it's just a really, really uh, tough, grueling, type com- grueling yeah. type competition. Do you? Would you say you're more likely to overtrain or undertrain your body? I definitely have a tendency to overtrain. I've had that issue in the past. So I know you guys have talked about um, like kind of welcoming people to change part of the um, training plans, but I know that um, I kind of have a tendency I might overdo it. So I was wondering if you do have a certain one um, that may be better for um, combining with occasional cardio versus something that's maybe like a twice a day training. I know that wouldn't be good for me right now. Yeah, I, I would. Okay. So we definitely want to scale back for a little while. You know, they've, they've actually done studies and shown that when people train for really intense, uh, physical performances, uh, it actually t- can take the body as long as months, uh, to get back, uh, it's, it's recovery ability. So it's actually causes, issues for people. And now as somebody like yourself who trains real hard, you're used to the way it feels and you, you know, any improvement feels good. So you're like, Oh, I can push myself. So it's going to be very important that you pay attention to that. So, um, Adam said maps anabolic. I think that's the perfect program for you. Uh, it's not going to overtrain your body. It's going to build lots of strength. Now, if you want to train in a way with resistance, that's more athletic minded, then I would go, uh, maps performance. Maps performance will also build a lot of strength and muscle on your body. But there's a lot. Of, there's a special emphasis on athletic performance. So if that's like what you like to do, yeah. But I still think he would be mo- if he was your client and you had the choice. What would you do? You know, anabolic, wouldn't you? It depends, right? Because uh, performance also has the mobility. It, mm-hmm. it depends on on how what he did for the Ironman training and also what he's going to stick to. Maps anabolic is definitely very straightforward. Muscle building performance has a little bit of that athletic. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of in that hybrid kind of. I, I love the MAPS anabolic in terms of phase one, and I love that protocol. However, I do love mobility training sessions in between. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you do get a lot of benefit from the trigger sessions in anabolic for that specific reason of recovery. But I would like you to focus a bit more on reinforcing your joints and, and really going through that recovery process because I'm sure there was a lot of stress and, and you know, potential uh, you know, underlying issues that may result. Uh, well, the, future. I, the reason why I'm still going to keep pushing anabolic is that I think this is not only does he need this physically, I think he also needs it mentally. I think if he has a, a tendency to overtrain, and this is what's I and not to mention we we all know what we was ideal for the next program. So mm-hmm. the ideal order would be anabolic right now, followed by performance. So we will address mobility, but yeah. right now you're going from this super high level amount of volume of training one of the best things that he could possibly do is to reduce that down to two or three days of foundational training. If you want, and if it was a client, right, and you were, and this is where our programs are not perfect, right? So maybe to Justin and Sal's point, I would make you run anabolic, but instead of trigger stuff, I would have more mobility type focused things. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, right? So you can take and you can modify even our program. So you know, because you guys all, I think we all agree that mobility should be focused and recovery, and that's where he should be thinking. 
Uh, but I also am thinking just the volume of training and performance definitely ramps up from anabolic as far as the volume yeah, of the training volume goes up. And I think he needs to go all the way down to anabolic. And I think it's going to be very hard for him. I think he's yeah, going to have to yeah. mentally challenge himself to stick to the programming. And then, yeah. and then, uh, then I would move to performance. Yeah, two to three days a week is going to be a tough shift. Yeah, right. I mean, you, you make a really good case, Adam. So, um, uh, so do you have access to Maps Anabolic? I don't know because I was looking at both Maps Anabolic and performance, but I know, um, I mean, recovery is a huge component to muscle building and gaining strength back, and just with all the gyms being shut down for the past year, or so I haven't really, I've really only been doing body weight training. So I was leaning towards Anabolic, but um, just wanted to get some advice um, from you guys. Okay, so we'll give you MAPS Anabolic. On the trigger session days, uh, focus on mobility. Focus on, you know, joint movement and, you know, making your joints feel healthy. In other words, treat those days as uh, active recovery days um, throughout the whole program. It's a three-month program, and that should be good. At the end of that three months, you should feel pretty strong and good, and then MAPS Performance would definitely be a good follow-up. I, I would love to see you do MAPS Anabolic, and then follow the webinar that I did on uh, primeprowebinar.com. Uh, so go to Prime Pro, it's free, and literally follow that routine. I think that routine is a, is a great routine. Do those on the days in between. That's right. Do those on the days in between. So follow MAPS Anabolic to a T, the way it's structured on the trigger session days. Follow that mobility routine that I created a webinar around. I think that's a really good place for you to be. And then after you get through Anabolic, then I would transition you into performance. That To me, that would be the most ideal. And again... I'm going to challenge you on the the mentality part because I know you're an athlete. I know you're going to want more and you're going to have to resist mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely get that. It's uh, my parents have been telling me the same exact thing for years. So uh, definitely appreciate, um, appreciate all your help guys. Awesome. All right. No problem. Thanks for calling. You guys familiar with the distances of uh, it's long, Iron bro. Man's I, Iron so Man, I look, I looked it up because Iron I, Man shit is yeah, legit. Because you got to swim, you got to bike, you got to run. It's ridiculous. Well, here it is. I, I just pulled it up because I, I didn't remember the. Specific. I've trained. Let me think. Five uh, people who trained for a half Iron Man, and then one of them went on to do a full Iron Man. But here's a half Iron Man, just so people know what, you're, what we're talking about. It's a one and a half mile swim, a fifty six mile bike ride. And a 13 mile <laughs> run. So this is a half Ironman, just to yeah, get an yeah, idea yeah, of which like is a, which is a half marathon and a what's 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 a what's considered like the long distance for bike. Uh, what a century, yeah. 100 miles. So yeah. it's more than half of that. Yeah, right, right. So one it's more, more than a half century, more than a, a half a marathon, and then also the swim all combined. It's insane. It's so when and I, that's a half marathon, so or a half yeah. Ironman. So when I train, I had a one guy that I used to train that was just really. He was actually a, uh, he was an ear, nose, and throat specialist and a surgeon. Really smart guy, high performer. Everything he did, really high performing. He hired me for the half Ironmans, and we and we really had to feel things out, right? Because it was really hard not to overtrain him because he was doing so much biking, swimming, and running all the time. You know what it turned into? One day a week of resistance training, and and a mm. lot of those days were moderate intensity. I would say probably one to two workouts a month. We pushed the intensity. The rest of them were like mobility. Well, and have and you stuff ever like seen? That. I mean, first yeah. of all, a lot of people don't even finish those Ironmans. Oh, no, the yeah. goal is to finish. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. goal is can you just complete it? And have you ever seen some people crossing the finish line on those Ironmans? Oh, yeah. Like Broken. Yeah, crawling yeah. to like finish it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Body's like all shaky. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, because so when I trained the guy, I was like, we, I, he would notice decreases in his performance. And so I had to scale it so far down. And, and then finally we hit the magic well, number. That's the which thing. Was, I mean, it, it takes all of your focus. Uh, you know, like that. that's the thing is the endurance part of it is going to make up the majority of what you're doing because you have to. And, I mean, I mean and, that's just the and bottom this line. Is why I'm pushing towards anabolic so hard because let me tell you, it's going to be so hard for this guy to make that switch. Yeah. I mean, the the, the, that, me the that, mental discipline it takes to train for an Ironman is like the opposite spectrum yeah. of yes. what I'm asking you to do to go train two foundational days yeah. or three foundational and, and days. And that's week. actually one of the reasons why I said performance at first, because one of my fears is it'll be- <laughs> Will you ease him off a little bit? Well, yeah, because it? it's going to be such a big <laughs> like difference. Cold turkey. Like yeah. he'll do it for a few weeks and he's like, screw it. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, can't, this is, I mean, so, that's a fair point. It's yeah. a fair point. But I think we can all agree that we know what his body needs. The most. Yeah. What his body needs the most is something more like anabolic. You're right. Yeah. Uh, he might be so addicted to that crazy training, maybe letting easing him off. You know, instead of almost feeling like you're cutting cold turkey. Totally. 